Now we are here with my butter, editor in large of TechCrunch. Editor in large TechCrunch, that's right. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. So we are here in Davos, and uh, the first subject that is discussed is digital economy. Mm -hmm. Blockchain is the word that is heard everywhere. How do you feel the media is handling now all that is related to blockchain and crypto? Well, I think it's interesting because the mainstream media is very much having to try and play catch up uh, in this subject. Um, most of the journalists, even in tech, aren't necessarily up to speed on it as well. Uh, because it's the, the industry uh, of blockchain and cryptocurrency has only really um, become a, a big issue in the last year. Um, prior to that, it was considered an interesting technology, but nobody, uh, you know, people weren't quite as interested in it as they are now. So the mainstream media is playing catch up, and you know, you see a lot of you know simple mistakes made about you know mixing up the differences between. Uh, tokens and coins and, and what have you. So it's, it's a tricky one. I think it, we will get there, but it's, uh, it's certainly a fascinating time. How do you feel the influence of media toward the market volatility now in fintech? Um, I think that there's a bit of a problem um, because uh, there needs to be much more robust journalism about this space. Um, a lot of it is sort of fairly press releasey. And uh, I think we can need to, you know, do a better job. Um, it would be good if if everyone could could do that a little bit more. Like independent journalism would be better. What is for you uh, news that is worth of being published? I mean that now our companies are using blockchain and putting ICO and think that this is worth newsworthy. What is for you the thing that catches your attention? Well, the thing about the tech crunch is that we are fundamentally interested in the actual underlying technologies of all of this new world and um, we uh, so we don't really go in for writing about ICOs and things like that we prefer to talk about the underlying technology uh, the actual applications what it's going to disrupt uh, those kinds of things sure it's fine to mention the fact that they might be doing an ICO but that uh, that's not really for me what should lead the news um, and also I think there's you know some ICOs are uh, interesting, many are not. So uh, it's the fundamental technology that counts. You were one of the first that catched uh, the launching of TON ICO, mm -hmm. Telegram ICO. Mm -hmm. So how would you evaluate the project and what did actually attract your attention? Well, I wasn't just one of the first. Um, TechCrunch and my story I did uh, with uh, Josh Constein uh, was the first deep dive into what the Telegram ICO will consist of, how, the, how it will operate as an economy in its own right, and what that means generally for the long-term survivability and, uh, of, uh, of Telegram itself. And there's enormous implications actually as well of, of how it's going to affect other existing social networks like, like Facebook, for instance, which of course is hugely valuable now at this point. So, I mean, what, what interests us is that, you know, they are, it would appear to be that they're going to move towards having their own currency, similarly to the way, in a way that people were using WeChat in, the, uh, in China to, uh, to swap uh, value with each other and to pay for goods and services. And, it, and I think it's fascinating because Telegram's ICO and therefore the ton uh, currency that it's going to come up with, um, it, it means basically that... Um, that this will be the first ever mainstream consumer application with a currency attached to it, uh, which, um, uh, you know, ha nobody's ever done that before. It's, it's really a big deal. So, uh, for obvious reasons, that's a, a big news story for TechCrunch. What about other highlights of uh, the year of 2017? What actually caught up your attention the most? What influenced or inspired you in fintech and news about this? Um, well, I think uh, it was fascinating to see the rise of uh, challenger banks uh, like uh, Revolut or Starling in Europe. Um, so challenger banks suddenly starting. I think that's going to give consumers a taste for brand new banking systems and banking brands. And then once they have a taste for that, then they might also be interested in uh, what's going on in the crypto world. Um, it's fascinating to see, you know, the rise of Coinbase uh, as really the first really kind of major consumer application uh, in this area. Um, 
And, you know, who knows what 2018 will bring? I think many interesting things. So what are your expectations? We'll watch this space. I have no expectations. I just, we just have to ride the, uh, ride the raging bull, as it were, for a while. I think uh, there's a lot of people talking about a market correction. I think that probably will happen in the real world economy as well as the crypto world. Um, and actually, funnily enough, when there's market corrections, you actually get a lot more innovation. So the cycle continues. What about the public attitude towards crypto and blockchain? How did it evaluate during all the time that you're working uh, for tech-related media? And what do you think will come in the years to come? Um, I think that uh, 2017 was when we saw crypto go to become a mainstream discussion. Uh, when you have taxi drivers talking to you about Bitcoin, that's when you know it's pretty mainstream. So um, that's a big deal. Um, you know, for various reasons, that's not necessarily a fabulous thing because it does mean that uh, it's very bubblish. It's a very bubble market at the moment. Um, but um, I, I think that. Uh, the fundamental underlying technology of what blockchain technologies are all about are not going away, they're here to stay. Uh, it is the authentication layer for the internet that the internet always needed and, and from here the sky's the limit. What about Davos and crypto community here? Is it different from other crypto communities at different events that you met? Do you think that the level of discussion is different here uh, or like the views uh, towards blockchain and crypto? Well, I think there's a lot of hype um, and a lot, you've got to remember that most of the people attending Davos are really in the finance community um, and asset management. Now, that means in a way that actually they're quite naturally predisposed to uh, understand many of the concepts around uh, crypto, cryptographic assets. Um, but um, in terms of the te technology, they're often uh, still behind. So. Um, you know, you go to sort of CEO dinner and they talk, you know, talk about blockchain, blockchain, but they don't really know, a lot of the time they don't really know what they're talking about. So um, it's really fascinating to watch. Um, it's not as, as geeky, shall we say, as some of the uh, events I've been to to cover the space, uh, but it's also very interesting. And um, yeah, it's, it's worthwhile, I think. But as somebody said to me the other day, they said, uh, why are we doing uh, crypto in Davos when we should actually just be doing our own version of Davos uh, for the crypto community? And that's probably what will happen. Great. Well, enjoy your time in Davos and uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. My pleasure. You. Thanks.